بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everybody In the previous lesson we talked about the construction of diesel engine Today I will explain the first system of the diesel engine It's called the turbocharging system We know that the increasing the amount of air and fuel into the engine will increase it in its power and efficiency we get this increasing from a device called a turbocharger as shown in this figure what is the turbocharger? a turbocharger is a device that drives more air into the engine to increase the power and torque of the engine parts of the turbocharger the turbocharger consists of three major components. The turbocharger com consists of the three major components as one, the turbine, two, the compressor, three, the bearing system, as shown in this figure. Let's explain step by step. One, the turbine. The exhaust gas the exhaust gas enters the turbine in left side of the turbocharger through pressure chamber and series of filters. The nozzle blade rings constrict and the exhaust gas on the turbine wheel. The movement of the turbine wheel rotates the shaft. Rotate this shaft. The movement of the turbine is turn rotate the impeller of the compressor on the another hand. A part of the air goes into the library cell from the outlet of the turbine. 2. The compressor wheel as the another hand. As the turbine wheel as the turbine wheel rotates from the hot high pressure exhaust gas expanding through the wheel is connected to a shaft that has a compressor isolated at the opposite end the compressor has two functions this compression has two main functions is connected as the shaft to have a compressor isolated at the opposite end. The compressor has two functions. The first is to raise the intake pressure and a engine into the ability to breathe. The another function is to increase air density. How does compressor work? The compressor also consists of two bars, compressor wheel and compressor housing and the compressor house the compressor wheel is attached to the turbine by a forged steel shaft the compressor wheel is attached to the turbine by a forged steel shaft as the turbine turns the compressor wheel the high velocity spinning draws the air and compressor the compressor housing converts the high viscosity high velocity into the low pressure air system into a high pressure air stream through a process called diffusion. The compressed air is pushed into the engine, allowing the engine to burn more fuel and produce more power. 3. The bearing system. The bearing system is the turbine supported by bearing system that links the turbine into the compressor, as shown in this figure. This bearing system connecting between the turbine wheel and compressor wheel the bearing system is housed inside a bearing housing and contains many design features critical to proper turbo operations there are another part it's not found in this picture it's called the air filter the air filter is probably the simple and most straightforward component of the intake system. 
the singular purpose of the air filter is to prevent anything anything other than air from getting into the air filter leaves bugs jerks pebbles and dust as few of the things that are air filter keep out of the engine while an air box is all well as good of the naturally aspirated street application it doesn't change to work with turbo charger now how does turbo charger system work after the intake after the intake air is breathed through the air filter it's routed into the turbocharger compressor as shown in the first part it's compressed into the inlet the air is then compressed in this compressor it's compressed and which increases its density of amount of mass bare unit of volume by the turbo compressor section it's the charge it's the charge through a boost tube as shown the air is passed from this tube and it's after cooler in this part the air is cooler because the compressing of the air increases the heat of the air inlet after the cooler is known as intercooler or charge air cooler to receive the hot the boosted air it leaves the compressor the cooler removes the excess heat which allows for further air density improvement while also cooling the intake air to charge. After the air is passed from the intercooler, it's passed into the intake valve. While also cooling the interior charge, another boost tube, the roast and the air from a cooler discharge side at the engine intake manifold, where air is routed into the intake valve as shown in this picture the air is come by the intake valve into the chamber after the air is routed into the intake valve as enter each cylinder after the air is uh, entered to the cylinder and the injection is uh, inject a fuel into the cylinder chamber it's been open a new more density and introduced increasing a fuel injection charge based open and now more dense air charge it's introduced a combustion cure as shown in this combustion chamber while the air and fuel is a compressed the combustion occurs after combustion the exhaust passes after the combustion the exhaust passes from this inlet from the exhaust valve as this shown in this valve the exhaust bus through the exhaust valve and into the exhaust manifold as shown in the picture the exhaust manifold rotate the exhaust gas the exhaust gas energy in the form of heat and pressure into the turbine stage of the turbocharger now the turbine housing as shown in this picture the turbine housing causes back pressure what does back pressure this back pressure and heat expand agents the turbine wheel blade causing the turbine wheel and shaft to spine which is turn drives the compressor on the other hand while the turbine rotates by the exhaust gas it causes the rotates to the compressor on the another hand 
which it's plates wheel on the intake side of the system wheel plates causing the turbine and shaft to spin which is turn drives the compressor wheels on the intake side the remaining exhaust gas then leaves the turbine stage and enter the exhaust system all this the function and how does the turbocharger system thank you for listening